Hello everyone, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to my interview session. I decided to reach out to a number of law students uh, just to interview them and ask them questions uh, on how are they coping during COVID-19 with their legal studies and all of that. And I thank you guys for availing yourselves so that you can uh, have this session with me. First, I'd just like you to introduce yourselves uh, briefly. Just tell us your name, uh, where are you from, where are you currently studying, and uh, which level are you at? I'll start with you, Christy, then Karabo, Kulu, as well as Mr. Chetty. You would be the last one. Hi, Zibalile. Thanks for doing the interview. I think it's really good. Um, I wish I had something like this before I started studying law, having someone tell us how the experience is. Um, but yeah, I'm Christy. I'm fourth year. I'm studying through UNISA and I'm based in Western Cape. All right. Thank you. Karabo. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, so my name is Garabu Mkhoyana. I am based in Gauteng and I attend with a uh, university of Witwatersrand known as Wits University and I am doing my final year. All right, thank you. Mr. Kool. <laughs> hey, hey, hey guys. Uh, my name is Haralisani Kolu uh, from the University of Fort Hare. I'm doing my fourth year. Uh, but I'm originally from KZN. Um, yes, I'm doing my final year. Thank you. All right. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. This is such a great initiative. And, you know, as Christy said, it, it would have been so nice and so valuable for uh, me to have had this opportunity to listen to law students and their experiences. So, Thank you again for this opportunity. Uh, my name is McAllen Chetty. I hail from Durban and I am in my third year at the University of KwaZulu Natal. All right. Uh, well, thank you so much for the introductions. I'll just jump to my first question, which is uh, not quite difficult. As most of you have seen, like for instance, Mr. Kolu is from uh, KZN, then he came to the Eastern Cape at the Investor Forte. How did you deal with the transition from high school into varsity, like having uh, to be independent and all of that? Uh, you can go first, uh, Mr. Chetty. So I was fortunate enough that I uh, always lived in Durban and I studied at uh, the University of Kuzili Natal. So it wasn't, I would think it wasn't such an issue to transition from uh, from moving from homes and then going to university and studying in a different province. So that wasn't an issue for me. But what was an issue was the everything at university is so different from school. So I think the basic things at, at university, there's no siren, there's no uh, breaks, everything is, you know, you're independent. So you have a whole lot of independence and you just need to, to you just need to be responsible enough to use that independence wisely. So for me, the first semester was particularly difficult. Uh, I struggled with getting my timetable in order. I struggled with finding lecture venues. Okay. And I think if I had known now, if I had known then what I know now, everything would have been so much better. So I think yeah. my advice for law students as well that are, in first year or uh, yeah, that for high school students and first year students is network. Get yeah. friends, make friends, don't be shy to ask around. Yeah. And you know, everything, everything will be so much better. Just it's, it's a transition, it's a difficult transition, but you will get through. Yeah, wow, thank you so much for that. I think we all struggled with finding lecture venues at first year. <laughs> I think everyone can relate to that one. Uh, Karabo, over to you. <laughs> okay. Um, so I think similar to, you know, Michael, and I, I stay in Gauteng. I'm originally from Limpopo, but I've been okay. here for quite a long time. Right. Um, so for me, the, there was no, you know, province shift. Oh, but okay. I think the biggest shift was coming from a really small school where you kind of know everybody. Yeah. And then going, you really just don't know who's who, what is what. It's really just, it's, it's like you're facing a giant now. So I think for me, the biggest transition was just the space in terms of the shift 
because um, in, in a small environment, you know, you're comfortable, you become really comfortable. Yeah. But in a big environment, yeah. it challenges you. So I think the biggest thing for me in terms of advice would be take care of your men- mental health. I think that's number one. I think that's the one thing I really struggled with um, because I'm naturally independent because I'm firstborn. So firstborns are just put in a position where they need to be independent somehow. So I never really struggled in terms of independence and transition. But the one thing I really struggled with was, you know, I, I, I would forget to take care of myself. And yeah. understanding that taking care of myself means that I'm the one that needs to function at the end of the day. I'm the one that needs to attend the classes. I need to be okay before anything else. So I yeah. think the biggest advice would be to really, you know, take some time, take care of your mental health and really be honest with yourself. If you're yeah. really not coping, speak to someone or, you know, get assistance. Yeah. Wow. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, Mr. Kulu. Yes, uh, um, I think mine is a little bit unique. Uh, because when I graduated from high school, I went to the University of Zululand, uh, wherein I pursued a qualification in consumer science. But then that was not my uh, <laughs> that was not my uh, passion. Um, yeah. it, it was not my passion because initially um, in grade eleven I was passionate with law, but then I on the way I encountered some discouragement. You know, people would say that law is for it's for um, certain people, you know, they would say that yeah. law is difficult, you would not make it to the workplace, you, it's hard to get jobs and so on and so forth. And as a result, I pursued some qualifications um, in, the, in the science arena, yeah. uh, but I could not make it because initially I had applied for pharmacy. Okay. Uh, then <laughs> when I was in Unizulu, when I pursued consumer science, I then sat down with myself to reevaluate myself as to what is it that I really want. Yeah. And I decided that if I really, really want law, I would have to go for it, irrespective yeah. of what every, everyone says. So that, yeah. uh, that gave me some, some um, um, chance and space to do some sort of an introspection, you know, uh, because that's when I sat down with myself and did some thorough research um, in relation to LLB, uh, become law, and so on and yeah. so forth. And also the, the, the law firms that are offering um, internships, uh, articles, and so on and so forth. Then I applied for law at Stellenbosch, um, UCT, and UFH, and all the institutions actually offered me LLB. And yeah. I took a decision that actually I'm going to go for this. You know, it was yeah. a challenge because everyone, even my family members, were like, you can't because you've already started, you've wasted the funds, and so yeah. on and so forth. Yeah. So there were a lot of criticisms. Uh, from people saying that uh, I, I should just pursue consumer science, you know, I'm left with a few years to finish. But then I told myself that I'm going to follow my heart. Then yeah. I went for LLB um, at Fort Hay. I couldn't go to Stellenbosch. Initially, I wanted to go to Stellenbosch, but due to lack of funds, I said that I'm going to go to UFH and yeah. considering the history and the reputation of the institution, then I considered that, no, I should pursue this. Then when I came at Fort Hay, I was um, sort of, because I had had some university experience before. Yeah. So it was not that much of a challenge for me. You know, yeah. I knew what I wanted. Um, as a result, I was so focused in my first year, you know, in my yeah. studies. Um, in, in initial stages, I was a bit intimidated because, you know, um, when I attended my second or third class in the introduction to law, and we were given a case about 232 pages if I'm not mistaken, that was in any case. And yeah. I read the case multiple times, but I could not understand it. And I called my mom and told her, and told her that actually I'm quitting, actually, because <laughs> I, I think I took the wrong decision. But then I had to actually revert back and, 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 and find the reason why I came there. And yeah. I, 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 I pursued the cause, and I did well in my first year. And perhaps that's, that's one of the advices that I would like to uh, put out there, particularly first year second year um, students as well, that um, it's an advantage to focus in early years uh, of your studies, particularly first year yeah. and second year, because that's where you get the fundamental principles of law. And as a result, by the time you get to your third year, it's actually easy to encounter any course. If you yeah. come across competition law, at least you've done statutory interpretation, you know how to yeah. Um, yeah. interpret the statute and apply the law. 
you know. So yeah. for me, um, I think um, uh, being focused in my first year gave me the foundation to encounter any challenge academically um, yeah. in other years, third years and fourth year. Yeah, and as a result, even during this season, I am able, or at least I am trying to cope because at least I covered the foundations in yeah. areas of my studies. Yeah, wow. Well, that's a good one. And it really is a unique experience. Um, over to you, Christy. Um, yeah, I think I definitely had a very different experience to all of you. Um, so yeah, I went from high school where you're obviously used to getting classes every single day and school bells ringing and all those types of things. And then I transitioned over to UNISA where you have no classes at the start of the year. You just kind of get handed your books and it's like, see you at exams. <laughs> um, so, you know, you kind of had to learn that discipline to sit down and scheduled time for your studies. Um, I think with me also, I work, I work three jobs during my studies. So I had to prioritize between my time of what's important between my studies and actual work. The biggest reason I studied through UNISA was purely because it was one of the most affordable institutions to actually go through. Um, yeah. So I was quite lucky now this year with COVID, I actually ended up like losing two of my jobs because of it. But I ended up getting a bursary through UNISA and I don't think I would have survived oh, wow. through this period. Yeah. But model of the story is just, yeah, I, I learned how to get disciplined and sit down and prioritize my things. Um, and yeah, just sitting down and doing the reading. But the biggest yeah. problem, I think all of you would have found is the volumes of the reading, <laughs> getting used to that yeah. in first year. It's quite a lot, but yeah. yeah. Wow, that's a good one. I'm glad I have different people from different uh, places with different experiences. Uh, thanks a lot for what you just said. Um, I want to ask, um, can you just, this is two in one. I'll ask two questions, but um, why did you study law? And so far, how has uh, your experience been of the LNP program? Uh, Mr. Kolo also mentioned that he also got to a point where he decided to call his mom and quit. So that's his experience, in fact. Of, uh, uh, that's just the gist of his experience of the LMP degree. Um, I'll start with you, Karabo. What's your experience? Why did you study law? And so far, what's your experience? Have you ever caught your point of why you say, I quit now? Okay. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if I've reached that point, but yeah. Um, so I studied law because of two main reasons. Um, the first one being my personality. So at high school level, um, you know, I did leadership stuff, but beyond that, I'd find myself, um, you know, very eager in terms of writing, very good at research, very well-spoken, but also I had a willingness to argue with teachers. As long as you're wrong, you need to be, you know, reprimanded as, yeah. you know, in, in a sense that I, I could see the difference in terms of what's wrong, what's right, but equally not put a face in terms of you're an adult or whatsoever, but if you're an adult and you're wronging a child, I was willing to speak out. So yeah. a lot of my personality traits, you know, swayed me in that direction. And then I think the second one was more of a personal experience. Um, so my aunt um, basically was murdered. So it was a femicide situation. Mm -hmm. And for me, that whole experience, because I witnessed the whole thing and it was traumatic and so forth, but equally, it brought a lot of questions for me because it took so long for, you know, for him to be arrested. He got released recently. You know, there were a lot yeah. of questions for me as to why, you know, why is it taking so long? You know, and, and I think a lot of people who are outside of the law box question, you know, that's why, you know, people often say the justice system is failing us. Yeah. So I think I wanted to, I, I was so curious to find out from an internal perspective, from a legal perspective as to why did it take so long procedurally? Why did it take so long substantially? Because yeah. it was such a personal matter to me and it would be easier for me to understand within. In terms yeah. of my experience so far, I think my journey has, yeah, it was, it's, it's been <clears throat> quite a journey. So I did the BCom Law and then the LLB. So I've okay. been, been at WITS for five years. And I think it, it, it was a huge transition, the early stages, mental health issues, adapting and so forth. But now I think I'm really comfortable. Yeah. Um, I even work at school. But equally, I think because at the beginning, I was a day scholar. So I used to travel home, school. So 
that was also a bit of a challenge. But now mm. I'm I stay in accommodation. So I think it was a huge transition in terms of being comfortable. But I think the biggest thing that helped was putting in the effort. You know, yeah. because I know that I'm not at school, I don't have the textbooks, I put in the effort, ask, you know, borrow if I have to, just putting in the effort and realizing that you may not have certain things, but if you don't have it, just ask. Just ask. Oh, wow. Thank you. Yeah, that's a good one. I'm really sorry about your aunt. It's uh, really sad. Uh, Christy? Ah, yo, I don't think I've ever gotten to the point where I really wanted to quit law. Um, yeah. I think you, you get stages where you feel demotivated, definitely. Um, but that's why I think it's so important to do other things. Like, like I'm very invested in, in mood courts and mock trials and those types of things. And it keeps me motivated because I think I get that practical experience and that idea of what I'm working towards to actually do. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I don't think I ever got to that point, but the reason why I wanted to study law, um, also when I was 17, one of my family members were falsely arrested by the police. Um, they just totally abused their power. They tried to kill the case um, and the case was dismissed. And then my family later on, instituted a civil claim against these police officers and we had assistance of a fantastic advocate and I think after watching him in court and um, just cross-examining these police officers I think I kind of got this hope that there is this justice even though we don't daily see it yeah. and, and yeah just basically an attorney giving a voice to the voiceless um, yeah. so yeah that that was my biggest reason why I ended up wanting to study law I think personal experience um, and just, just looking at society in general as well, we, we need someone to just step up and yeah. kind of be the voice, you know? Yeah. Wow, that, that's a good one. That's a good one. Mr. Claude? Oh, yes. Uh, for me, um, uh, I, was, I was inspired by a person um, because uh, initially I, I, I knew that there is something called law um, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a profession. But I didn't know what law is about. It's law, law. I, I just, I just didn't have any idea regarding that. But then there was yeah. my uh, high school teacher who was teaching me uh, life sciences. Hopefully, he will be inspired when he watches this on YouTube. <laughs> so uh, he was pursuing his qualification at UNISA LLB. So uh, I was quite good in, in in biology. So most of the time we were just close. We would have some conversations, uh, maybe after yeah. class. We would have chats. Um, yeah. So he would most of the time, you know, explain to me this um, LLB thing, you know, sometimes I would see the books in, in, in his uh, cottage, he would tell me about civil procedure, family law, and he would tell me that he's passionate yeah. about family law, passionate about um, civil procedure, and he would try to uh, explain it to me, and it wouldn't make sense that time, trust me. But then the, the passion that I saw from him, I sort of just reconnected with it and i was curious to know more as to what is this law thing you know yeah. and as i said that um when i went to 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 UNISU, um when i was pursuing my degree in consumer science that's when i gave myself time to really do some research about law what yeah. is is really low and as I did research I sort of uh, got more more it got more interesting for me and I applied for it. but the passion I uh, usually um, I mean it, it, it mostly grew uh, on my first year when I really really yeah. um, encountered the real law the real principles and how they apply in fact you know reading yeah. the, 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 the scenarios and see how the law you know cures um, or ensures that justice is done so yeah. for me um, it was really really passion um, I think also passion and, and inspiration is, is the one that even in times wherein I was facing challenges, I told myself that actually I will go for it because it's what I'm passionate about. And even now, it's still in the blood, I would assume. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah. Wow, thank you for that one. Uh, Mr. Chet. Okay. So, um... As I was growing up, I was very vocal. I was very opinionated. And because this was also academically inclined and these these are the characteristics people associate with lawyers so my parents family members my teachers would often say you would make a good lawyer so you can you should consider becoming a lawyer but it really became apparent to me that i wanted to study law and i want to be a lawyer 
when I was mature enough to understand the importance of lawyers in our society and what a positive impact lawyers can have, especially and particularly in South Africa, in which we live in, in a country where they are, there's so many injustices, there is yeah. so much of inequality. We can make a difference as, as uh, law lawyers can have a huge impact in our society. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, that was the reason that I decided that I wanted to, to do law. But also mm -hmm. uh, similarly, like Karabo, she said when she looked at her personality, when I looked at my strengths, my weaknesses, and what, I, what difference I wanted to make, law was the obvious choice for me. Yeah. So it, particularly for those reasons, I decided that I wanted to do law. Um, I didn't ha get to that point, and hopefully I don't get to that point uh, in which I want to <laughs> want to quit. But there have uh, been moments, like Christy said, that you feel extremely demotivated. You have these these low points where you have uh, where you have so many so much of stress and anxiety because of the workload because of the uh, the content and yeah but i haven't reached that point where i just wanted to quit and hopefully i don't yeah hopefully you guys don't quit all of you um i want to ask now <laughs> So far, what is your favorite course in the LLB program? And uh, do you actually want to specialize in that area, that particular area of law? I'll start with you, Christy. Oh, uh, see, I think contract law might have been my, my favorite subject of all, just purely because it relates to every single field of law. You can't yeah. exclude one single field of law without considering the rest. Yeah. Um, and I just think no matter what you're in, whether you're doing family law, commercial, corporates, um, whatever it may be, contract is everywhere. Um, yeah. So that was definitely one of my favorite subjects. And yeah, I definitely, I would like to specialize in it and I definitely like to practice it. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, contract law. Uh, over to you, Mr. Chetty. Okay, so <laughs> I, I, as uh, you asked the question, I tried to consider which one I like more and I just, I just can't, uh, I just can't choose one. So yeah. there's two modules that I particularly enjoyed thus far, and that is uh, constitutional law and contract law. Mm -hmm. And I think it's uh, because of my, um, my plan. To, to strike a balance between commercial and constitutional law. So I think it's it's due to that reason. But yeah, mm -hmm. I thoroughly enjoyed both of them. They were both very challenging, but I enjoyed the challenge. It was, it it's something that I really enjoyed. And I do hope to, to practice in those fields. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to agree with you. Constitutional law is really challenging, guy. Eh? Uh, Mr. Cole. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, um, that's a difficult question <laughs> for me, but I will try and, and tackle it. Uh, for me, uh, man, in my journey, um, um, well, in early years, like first year and second year, of course, constitutional law, um, contract law, and administrative law uh, were my favorite modules. Um, but then uh, when I got to my third year, I sort of encountered some corporate law modules now. Yeah. I, I started to encounter company law, um, amongst other things. I fell in love with company law um, a lot. Um, and I sort of tested some, some, some sort, a bit of company law in practice. So now having to deal with the really practical side of, of, of company or corporate yeah. law. And I fell in love with company law. And now in my third year, there are also modules, of course, which are related to the corporate law sector, like competition law and um, uh, securities mm. regulation, or what they normally call securities law. So yeah. um, now I'm in a, a position whereby um, I'm more uh, passionate with the corporate sector, particularly corporate law. Uh, yeah. But I, I would want to believe that checking my, um, my uh, transition from first year to fourth year, as I get exposed to certain areas of law, certain passion grows as I, yeah. as, as I move. And I think even next year when I go to, to into practice, 
I will be exposed to other areas of law because I want to believe that the theoretical law and the practical side of law, of the law mm. is actually different because yeah. what what I've noticed is that with the corporate side of the law and with the law in general, let me make an example of the corporate side of the law. You've got the law before the transaction and you've got the transaction and then you've got the law after the transaction. You know, yeah. law takes place after the transaction when the dispute arises um, in relation to the transaction. So now you start yeah. to see other side of the law as, 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 as um, um, you know, that maybe may help you to, or may instill some passion in you. So I think that's what happened to me when I went to do some vacation work in one of the law firms. Yeah. I sort of fell in love more with the corporate side of the yeah. law. And even now I am passionate with corporate law, competition law and securities law. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that one. Uh, over to you, Karabo. Okay, so I'm I really I, I don't know. I I really don't know. Uh, because I've had different experiences with, you know, different courses. Somehow I end up um, being forced to like all of the courses that I end up doing. Yeah. But I, I think in term, from my experiences, I noticed that I shift towards um, liking courses that are more um, transformative in nature. So I really leaned towards property. It was a huge favorite of mine, despite how difficult it was. But, you know, I also leaned towards things like succession, things like persons, mm -hmm. things that basically need to be changed in a lot of our communities in South Africa. Yeah. So I, I leaned towards a lot of that stuff, you know, little like law courses that really, if they get, you know, infiltrated into our communities, they change a lot, you know, the dynamic of how we actually operate. Um, but in terms of, I think, specialization a bit, um, maybe that would, that would kind of, elaborate on what exactly I want to do. But really, I'm going to be doing my master's in international law next year. So yeah. I think that would naturally be the course that I can say, you know, interna public international law is the way um, and is the area in which I will be heading towards. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Um, I, uh, let me ask now, Christy mentioned something that uh, she was also working besides studying. So do you uh, what is it that you guys are doing just besides studies you know if you're working involved in community work and all those things and how do you balance um because it, it, it surely is demanding how do you balance uh, those various tasks with your studies um i'd like you to go first christy ah uh, geez i think yeah it comes down to prioritizing hey i mean yeah, I, I, I worked three jobs, so I had a nine to five job and then that meant either getting up early to study or doing late evening studies um, and then same thing on weekends as well. So it, it got quite difficult, but I mean, like, like I said earlier, mental health is also really important. It's so easy to get stressed up with work and studies and everything and prioritizing. You, you quickly get into this panic and have this anxiety. So. Yeah you need to kind of remain calm and that's why prioritizing is so, so important. Um, yeah, but finding a balance between all these things, it sounds bad, but I think it's purely impossible to find this perfect balance. Yeah. You either lean more to your studies or more to work. And I always try to put my studies first. As important as work is, it's just there to pay for my studies. Yeah. Um, so my law studies will always, always come first. And that's also, why I try and do things like mood courts. Um, they are so, so important to do, especially for someone like me who wants to do litigation, you get to experience it. And unfortunately it means taking time out of work. Once again, it, it's prioritizing studies. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's the biggest thing I can say is just prioritize, prioritize. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Mr. Bolo. Mr. Oh, okay. Um, I think there was a network problem. Um, um, for me, um, I've always been that person who is, um, of course, Zibalule knows me. <laughs> I've always been that person who has been um, from point A, been focused to, to his studies. So, uh, because in my first year, I told myself, 
myself that I've got, I have I have done a research before I even came to law school, mm-hmm. and I had to actually evaluate to get as to to get in the market what what kind of requirements do I need, and and I I I, I found out that actually to ensure that you make it to the to the workplace and particularly to the top uh, workplace, if I can say, um, you should do well academically. So it's, since my first year, I ensured that I focus on my studies and I do well. And I could just um, say it confidently that it worked for me. And then my plan was that maybe in my third or fourth year, then I will start venturing in other activities. And yeah. as we speak right now, there are other things that I'm involving myself in you know, that uh, do not involve academics. But throughout the academic year, there are other, of course, activities that are related to law that I've been doing some moot court competitions, you know, yeah. of which um, that's one of the area that I'm very, very much passionate about. So um, I was able to balance, you know, um, academics and some sort of moot court work. And yeah. also I did involve myself to certain um, organization within the university. I was, um, of course, trying to balance out my studies, mm. uh, mood court work, and also participate in certain uh, organizations uh, like SLSJ, um, um, amongst other organizations. And also there was a sort of a group of students that I was working with who were providing yeah. um, private tutoring to first year and second year students. So at least those were the things that I, I was really um, participating in within the campus, you know. Uh, but also, I, as I said, that in my first year and my second year, I ensured that I focus on my academics. It yeah. was my priority. I, I could even say that I was on books full time. And it, it worked pretty well for me. It worked pretty well for me. And I told myself that in my third and fourth year, I will try then and, and try and explore other things uh, that I'm passionate about. And now yeah. I'm, venturing, I'm venturing into into business, which is something that I had, you know, contemplated before I even come to university. But then I had to do a, pro- a proper plan to ensure that I secure uh, my my bag, you know, in terms of uh, academia. Yeah, secure the bag. <laughs> <Can> <laughs> Okay, so I don't even know where to start. Um, I have a lot going on for myself. Um, And yeah, okay. So from first year, I've always had multiple things going on. So because I was a day student, I couldn't really, you know, find myself immersing into vids at all. I didn't really, I couldn't attend, you know, society stuff or whatever because it was happening at night or outside of time and I got to catch the bus. So, um, I, because I've always been into the leadership stuff. So let me give you guys an example of the things. I I mean, an idea or picture of the stuff that I've been involved in. So on campus, I'm a tutor. And then I also work for the writing center. Um, yeah, those are the two things I do on campus and those are day friendly stuff. And then outside of that, because I also wanted to build my leadership career on top of my law career, I then decided to work in the civil society space quite a lot. So I work, currently I work with the African Union. Um, I work with the UN. Um, I have my own civil society organization and I do a whole lot of other things. So I think what worked for me, and, and I really liked what, you know, Kulu said about focusing on the first two years, even though my experience was absolutely different. I think that's a really great way. Yeah. But I, I don't use, so my strategy is I'm not a deadline chaser. Yeah. I'm a free time chaser. So as opposed to waiting for deadlines to come and then I do the work, I, as the work comes, I get it out of the way so that I can have free time yeah. because I'm always going to have something to do. So as opposed to waiting, okay, this one is on the 25th, so I'll do it 23, 24, something yeah. there. As it comes on the 20th, I do it to get it out of the way so that I can have free time. So I'm a free time chaser as opposed to a deadline chaser. And then again, prioritization, you know, um, I work in terms of, you know, I'm a to-do list type of girl. I'm a diary type of girl. I'm a reminder type of girl. If it means having three alarms for one event, that's me. You know, I just need to, I'm, I'm very, 
much of a time savvy person and I try and make sure that I get things out of the way so that I have more free time and surprisingly I even found myself being able to you know having Sunday offs you know having me times being able to do all those things because I really I'm a get things out of the way do them and get them out of the way type of person yeah yeah oh wow I wish I could be like you I I struggle a lot (laughs) with doing things on time Uh, Mr. Chid uh, before I answer your question, I would just like to, you know, I'd just like to say that all of you guys are so inspiring. It is really not easy to study and do so many different things. And all of you are doing amazing things. So well done. It is really inspiring. So uh, similarly, I also have quite a lot going on. So from when, when I completed matric, I um, got a part-time job. Afterwards, I was working, I became a promoter. Uh, Then in first and second year at university, I was still promoting. So I had a part-time job. Um, I was a volunteer from, I think, 2018, 2017 and 18 at two nonprofit organizations. So I would uh, be a fundraiser and these organizations help a vulnerable women, children, substance abuse, um, substance yeah. abuse, people that are, um, p- people that are basically, um, you know, in vulnerable positions. Yeah. So uh, that's something else that I did. I was tutor in matric and I continued that um, when I was at university. So I tutor maths and accounting and EMS to students, learners in my community. I am a mentor at my university and I'm a student representative. So I have quite a lot of things going on. And, you know, just like Christy said, it's, it's very difficult or it's almost impossible to have this perfect balanced lifestyle. Yeah. But it's something that we, we should strive towards. So I try to do this by having a schedule. So I try to manage my time well. So I, for example, I will have like two hours studying for a particular module. A 30 minute break, uh, then I will have a student that I need to, uh, need to teach. Mm. So I try to manage everything by having a plan, having a schedule and managing my time. So I think that's the most important thing. It's quite difficult. Sometimes you, you, uh, anticipate for more time than you needed or you anticipated you know you anticipate uh, less time than what you actually would use but it really does help it gives you some type of guidance and you're able to use all your time to the best of your ability but besides that I think as as you guys have been mentioning throughout this uh, this video mental health is important it's important to, you know, there, there is so much of assistance available. We just need to get, a, get out of the stigma that, you know, you're weak if, you, if you're having a mental breakdown, if you have anxiety, if you're, you're feeling emotional. There is so much of help and there's, there's so much of facilities available to us. So I think... That's one thing, especially, uh, I'm I'm speaking about this because especially when you have a lot going on, it becomes overwhelming. And once your mental health is declining, everything just basically just falls. So it's important to to have time management and ensure that you are are mentally healthy. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's very insightful. Um, thank you so much, guys, for sharing. You really are a distinctive group of students. You have a lot going on, eh? This is so inspiring. Um, Ulu mentioned something about uh, doing vacation work at some law firm. Have you had the opportunity to do work work? And uh, how was the experience for you? Um, was it different from studies? Obviously, it is because it's practical work. But please share with us, how was your experience of vacation work if you have? I'll start with you, Karabo. Okay, yeah. So I have done back work at two um, corporate firms. Mm. Um, it was, so both of them were two weeks. So that, that's substantial time to kind of have 
you know, a good feel of the law firms, the corporate space, and actually decide as to if this is for you or not. Yeah. Um, my experience was really good um, at both firms because, you know, you were assigned to a specific um, department. Um, I mean, I didn't really get to choose them both, but some are like yeah. to choose. But either way, I found myself now interested. So for the first VAC, I was put in competition. And then I ended up really liking competition. I was like, oh, this is really nice. Yeah. Um, and then the second one was more of, you know, business entity related type of stuff. Yeah. And equally, I enjoyed it as well. So I think it's, it's really, it allows you to really see that even though, you know, you might not be interested in a particular area, you might end up really loving it and falling mm -hmm. in love with it. And, you know, you, you, I like the question you asked us before in terms of what area we like. You yeah. might find that at the end of it, the areas you like, you're not even going to work in those areas. You know, mm -hmm. you might think you mm -hmm. like litigation, you like you know, appearing mm -hmm. in courts, but that might not even be the case when you get to practice because it's a whole different situation. Yeah. So I think what it really taught me is to really be open-minded. You know, you can definitely have interests, but be open-minded because the, the area that you think, you know, you and it are not cannot be best friends might end up being you know a speciality you might end up being an expert in it and really enjoying yeah. it um when i went mm -hmm. to my first vacation work the one of the directors is like she really liked litigation you know a lot of us like talking we think court is for us and you know she really liked litigation but she after her first year of um candidate attorney she realized that litigation is really not for her and she's mm -hmm. better suited somewhere else yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Mr. Cole? Oh, yes. Um, well, for me, I, I, I went for my vacation back in my second year um, in Sentin with the Cliff Decker of Mayanova. Um, well, initially, when, when I applied for, for the vacation work, I, I actually had an idea that vacation work is just the just a work exposure or just a work experience uh, kind of a thing. Uh, I didn't know that actually the firms are looking for a potential employee for them, you know. Yeah. So when I got to that particular space, I sort of, um, you know, we were introduced to the directors and we were yeah. introduced to the firm at large, you know, and I was assigned to the corporate uh, and commercial department and yeah. also to the litigation department. It was a two week um, 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 uh, backward session. So, um, you know, for me, I, when we were doing all what we were doing, uh, when we were doing presentations sometimes, I, I, I actually truly and honestly didn't know that these people are actually observing us. You know, these people yeah. are examining us. But then I would say that because of um, willingness to learn, I did mm -hmm. everything well, you know, because of hard work and I knew that I'm in that space to learn, you know, and I was, I constantly was that person who would ask questions, you mm -hmm. know, and other occasions I would be given work when I'm doing nothing, I would ensure that I approach um, the, the, the director and say that I'm doing nothing, I would love to, to do something and get exposure yeah. to something. And I would also attend meetings, uh, you know, with uh, directors, you know, and try to, to learn some stuff um, yeah. and how law works in the corporate sector. So I got a sort of um, really, really different exposure and I realized mm -hmm. that the workplace is quite distinct from uh, from the, the the school environment, like I said, that with law it's law, and then and the transaction. Then after the transaction, you find law. You know, because in the corporate environment, you are dealing with transactions. Uh, you will only deal with complex legal matters, maybe in the litigation department, where in the, their disputes. You know, yeah. so I gained a lot of experience, and there were various presentation by different directors in different departments, competition, mm -hmm. corporate and commercial, real estate, and so on and so forth. So when I came back, um, I think I was fortunate enough because I went there in my second year. So as I was doing my third year and fourth year, at least I've got some sort of an understanding as to the possible area of law that I might, I might venture into. Yeah. But also I would like to, uh, you know, note this, that 
with law or so far, in my opinion, um, it's advisable to really study law with understanding because yeah. you do not know where the journey might take you, you know? Yeah. So um, as I said, I, 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 this year I spoke to my uh, dean uh, when I wanted some advices as to the electives that I should, uh, that I should choose for my final year. And then he said to me, as I couldn't choose other electives that I was passionate about, he said to me, you know what? Uh, um, don't worry about other electives that you maybe cannot choose due, due to the limited mm -hmm. number. Because as long as you've grasped the fundamental principles of law, you can mm -hmm. actually do anything that is related to law. Yeah. Literally, once you've done constitutional law, once you've done uh, the general principles of contract, and perhaps statutory interpretation. When you encounter competition law, competition law is a statutory based uh, module. As long as you've got the fundamental principles that when I interpret the statute, I look at the background, the papers, and the legislative provisions, and when the legislation uh, comes into force, you are covered. You know, yeah. as a result, once you've grasped the fundamental principles of law, even if you can be exposed to the mining sector, you can be able to understand the legal principle governing the mining sector. You know, yeah. so as a result, that gave me some comfort. And perhaps this is the same advice that should go out there that really, really focus on grasping the skill because what is necessary mm -hmm. is the skill. And then you can actually encounter anything that is related to law. Um, thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. That was a mouthful. Um, I, I like to stress this enough, like you, you did good by actually taking initiative when given an opportunity to learn, by actually approaching directors and asking for work. And that's a good one, Paul. Um, Mr. Chetty? Yes, uh, in second year, I did a vacation work with the Department of Justice and Constitutional Development. Mm -hmm. So I was placed in the Amlazi Magistrates Court and it was it was an exciting experience. Uh, so we liaised with defense attorneys, the um, prosecutors, the magistrates, and it was an, a criminal trial. So it was, it was very interesting to see the practical side of law. So that was, um, it was, I would recommend vacation work to every law student. It really gives you a feel of how the law is practiced. I will also be uh, completing vacation work um, with Aspirin, Aspirin uh, th at the end of this month. So it's okay. an online, online based um, vacation work because of COVID this year. But at the beginning of this year, I applied for vacation work and I was supposed to do vacation work and then COVID. So yeah. unfortunately this year, I, didn't, I won't be going to any law firms, but I'm excited to do uh, vacation work with Aspen. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, over to you, Christy. Um, yeah, I also did vacation work. I did vacation work with two um, intermediate firms, uh, one in Umschlange, Coxie Yates. And I must say it was one of the best experiences I've had at law firms. Mm -hmm. Just they have this, I, th I think it's really important to first decide when you do back work, if you can see yourself at that firm. Because yeah. a lot of the firms have different types of ways of communicating. Like at this firm, I found there was a very open door policy. So mm -hmm. if you got stuck with something, you can literally knock on a director's door and ask, hey, can you help me with this? Any ideas what I can do? Um, so it's, it's a great environment. You get other firms, which I've also been at, which are much more strict. So, you know, it's kind of like you're on your own, so figure it out or you mm -hmm. shouldn't be here. Um, so you just kind of need to figure out what type of environment you want to surround yourself with. And then a term which came up earlier is being open-minded. That's so, so, so important. Um, I was lucky enough to be rotated during all my back work. So you got to see all the different sides of law, whether it be corporate, the litigation, the family. And I think you start narrowing down to where your passion lies. I found out during my back work because the first time I did a mock trial was actually at back work. Um, at the Friday, they set it out and they split us all the back students into teams. And it was great. They gave you like 24 hours to prepare and you really see what you can do in that time. Yeah. And I absolutely loved it. It's thinking on your feet, it's staying confident and you figure out what skills you have while you're staying open-minded through the whole process. Um, so yeah, definitely I can recommend go for back work if you can. 
um, even as early as first and second year, go, go do it. Um, I think it's wonderful. Most people only start in, I think, third or fourth year because they feel they need more knowledge of the law. But as you're there, it's, it's a learning experience. And like was said earlier, go approach the directors, speak to the partners. It's the only way they're going to remember you. They, they're not going to remember the person that was just there doing their work. They're going to remember the person coming, making a statement. This is who I am. Remember me. So, you know, find something which makes you stand out, which, which is your speciality. So, yeah, VAC work is a great, great, great experience. I can definitely recommend it. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Uh, Mr. Kulu, you raised your hand. Yeah. Um, I, just want, I just wanted to emphasize the fact that, you know, um, another thing that is very, very much vital is that uh, you must keep on, on, on working hard. Because if you work yeah. hard, your work speaks for you, literally. Yeah. Really. Um, I think that that is, that, is, that is my experience so far. Um, you know, work hard and ensure that you, you really push behind the scenes. Because if you go to the, to the, to the, um, to the industry or to the profession, perhaps when you graduate, when you go to, for, for vacation work, your work speaks for you. You hardly, uh, you hardly, speak and maybe try to prove that you are capable your yeah. work speaks for you so that is that is my that is my advice out there that you must work hard and then the rest will be executed by your efforts yeah, and the your, your, your work will speak for you that's a profound yes. quote uh, due to the covid 19 like uh, most facilities in fact almost everything now has uh, forced us to shift to doing things online that includes studying, uh, assessments, and all of that. How have you guys been coping with your studies, like with this online studying? I'm sure it put us something new to many. Um, let me start with you, Mr. Chiuti. So uh, at the beginning of this video, we were just discussing this. It, it was hectic. Having to transition from normal, well, normal for me, in lectures and, you know, having the opportunity to consult with your lecturers and having your friends around you to yeah. you know to get assistance with whatever you needed so it it was a huge challenge to just be on your own and you know no lectures and being tested online i think that was the most nerve-wracking experience being tested online but overall i was i'm quite um happy and satisfied that our university, uh, which was UK, which is UKZN, took every initiative to make sure that all the students were able to transition. Yeah. And uh, we started a bit late due to some uh, issues, but we, we completed the semester. Yeah. And I was satisfied with my results. Yeah. So although it was a challenge, it was something new, but we we came through, so I'm glad for that. Yeah, uh, that's insightful, Karabo. Um, I think I can relate with Michael in terms of you know. Um, I think there's obviously the privilege of having an institution that you know makes the effort to ensure that you're comfortable in terms of you know devices, in terms of you know data and so forth. And I think on my side. Vitz definitely did that. I mean, we are finishing in our normal time. Yeah. By the time when people are still figuring it out wow. or, you know, we were normal. We are, we are finishing on the 27th. We are going on holiday. We not finishing. I mean, our, our, our dates are finishing next year, but our exams are clearly finishing on time. So I think with us, we, our, our institution really pushed us. Um, tomorrow we are doing, we in our fourth block. So we are finishing. We are... Mm finishing off uh, but I think in terms of me uh, personally I had a really difficult um, time adapting to the online learning I moved from being a person that is a free time chaser to being a deadline chaser I just it would be deadlines would push me to work basically procrastination yeah. and I were best friends during this time when the deadline comes maybe I see like two or three days before I'm like okay I need to get to work now and prepare for the test and whatsoever but it was very difficult I think I'm still I'm still at a point where I'm still a deadline chaser but I think I'm yeah. okay with that 
And I think it's a matter of just really being okay and being comfortable with your way of doing things. Mm. For example, and I'm just going to be really honest in terms of my experience. For example, I find it really difficult to tune into live lectures. I don't do that at all. I yeah. would encourage you to do it if it works for you, but I'd rather deal with the recorded ones at my own time when I can focus. Because when I maybe attend the lectures, I get tired, sleepy, start doing my own things and, you know, start walking around or whatsoever. So I think it's, it's really a matter of finding what works for you and not yeah. really try and adapt to what has been advised. And what works for me is not tuning in for the live lectures what works for me is really just working at my own time and working at my own pace if preparing for tests two days before works for me it's that's okay as long as i'm passing and i'm getting the marks so i think it was a matter of really just adapting but it took me a really long time i think maybe two months to which i was still like what's happening am i okay uh do i still is are we still gonna go back to campus and i think now i'm fine But I think the one thing I've also noticed is I got detached from my academics. Mm -hmm. And I think that was a reality for a lot of people. Um, In my mind right now, I'm not a student. I am done with my, with my LLB. I'm just waiting (laughs) for the documents to come. I just need to write the exams and be over and done with. I got really detached from it. And I think I see the value of going campus for, mm-hmm. for in-person mm-hmm. engagement because that keeps you a bit accountable but when yeah. I'm so far away from everything I'm just I'm, I'm basically a robot I'm doing as assignments come I try and do it for fun but I really was really demotivated and detached yeah. but I think at the end of the day I need to pull myself through because I really need mm-hmm. that LLB or I'm just gonna be a, a, a dropout and I don't want yeah. that <laughs> I relate with your response a lot at some point I also felt like a university dropout yeah Mr. <laughs> yes, uh, I, I can also relate. Actually, uh, I relate a lot with her experience. Um, you know, uh, um, I think I, I have a lot to say about the experience that I've had amid this uh, coronavirus season. But, you know, if, if, if you would notice, um, pre-COVID-19, uh, you know, the academic nature of teaching and learning, it was normal, you know? You had a, a lecture student where you could at least express yourself, you know, mm-hmm. orally, you speak, you know, in front. So that could advance your public speaking and articulation skill, social life, power of association with friends, you know, after mm-hmm. the class, we just, you know, get to talk, you know, that sort of, you know, eased some of the things that we are going through personally in our own respective space. But guess what? Guess what? Um, COVID-19 said that, no, you are going to be in your own closet, you know, and, and face your problems. Now, it is now difficult for us to, you know, get something to distract us. But I would like to say that it's good. It's good that the lockdown did put us in our respective closets. Because there we have no choice but to be honest with ourselves, you know, because you can't lie with yourself or you can't lie to yourself. That's where you really look at the mirror and question yourself, you know, as to where am I lacking, maybe academically, personally, emotionally, and so on and so forth. So you get to face your own demons because I feel, I feel like personally, the university was a distraction for other things that we are going through. And as a result, we did not get time to deal with what we are going, we were going through in our own respective space. So yeah. for me, I would say that um, the lockdown, uh, COVID-19, it gave me an opportunity to self-introspect myself, you know, mm-hmm. self-evaluate myself as to what is my position in life? What is my position academically, you know? So uh, that's, that's my view so far, because you see that uh, even when it comes to routine and habits, we had to adjust to new routines and new habits. Even when it comes to studying, when it comes to waking up, my habits were messed up. Bro. I, I did not know when is the morning, when is the afternoon, when do I eat the breakfast. I would eat the breakfast at 15 you know, p.m. 
so um, uh, for me, um, that's, that's, that's my view. But at the same time, now COVID-19 put, did put us in a corner, whereby, because as I said that we were spoon fed, there is a lecturer who deliver uh, the lecture in front of you, you jot down the notes, and sometimes, for me, my observation is that that has been a recipe for memorization, you know, because if you've got slides, at least you know that this is a guideline, I'm going to just memorize this and write it in the exam. Guess what? You do not understand the law, but you memorize the law, uh, pass crime and forget, you know, but now with COVID-19, you have, have no choice because you cannot memorize the entire book. You have no choice but to sit down and and understand what you are reading. If you try to memorize the entire book, you go crazy, trust me. But with the slides, you just read the slides the day before the examination or the day before the test, you go and write, you know. So that's why I noticed that, you know, during this season, you get some time to really, you know, be curious on what is written because I was reading the book, trying to adjust the chapters, you know, it was I'm used to be at least be given guidelines and especially at the inception stages of the lockdown because we didn't have online classes and so on and so forth. But what, yeah. I, what I decided is that no, I'm not, I'm not going to study anymore. I just, I just said that I'm quitting because I wasn't hoping to study. So now I started to look for cases. Um, as I was reading cases uh, or case law, it got to be so much interesting for me because I feel like the book is just absolutely Right. It, it is mm. full of academic views and academic criticism and doctrines. You know, mm. it does not really tell us how does the doctrine apply in real mm. facts. Even if the case is being referenced in a book, it's simply a principle, you know, that is put there. But now with case law, you read the facts, the facts maybe they can be interesting and you see how the law was applied and how yeah. the court yeah. decide the judgment. And I've been keeping up at least with the recent judgments, you know. So for me, the lockdown, it put me in a place where I, I should get out of my comfort zone because I could see that the clock is ticking, you know, in as much as I was trying to avoid, uh, you know, studying, I just said that, what is a different technique that can work for me? Let me look for cases. You know, I'm doing law insolvency. I'm doing a company law. I mean, a securities regulation. Let me look for later, latest cases in relation to the modules that I'm doing, you know, and yeah. that helps me. And I think case law is the best tool to study and understand. Mm. No, because we are not in a way that considering the lot as students in our own respective spaces, you try to memorize your, your, your head will explode, trust me. So for me, um, I think what I can say uh, in essence is that uh, the lockdown or COVID-19 took us out of our comfort zone, if I can say, mm. you know, you now have to plan, you know, you have to plan for yourself. You have to have your own uh, timetable uh, because you know. Okay, let let, let me cut. <laughs> let me cut. Um, yeah, can you hear me? Sorry about that. Someone was knocking on my door. Eh? Okay, yeah. Let me just conclude by saying that um, another thing that is that is very important is proper planning. During this season, you have to sit on your own and do some planning. Because lack of planning, you know, considering that we've got different um, uh, modules, is really a recipe for, 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 for laziness, you know. If you do not plan, you are actually applying to say that, oh, I'm, I'm lazy. It's a recipe for excuses, you know, because you think that I have company law, I have security regulation, I have competition law, and you just decide, well, I'm not going to do anything, you know. Why? Yeah. Because you don't have planning. Somebody talk, uh, spoke about the to-do list. I also, you know, do the to-do list. The to-do list uh, is actually, and an, an it makes, it, 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 it gives you an obligation to do something. Because when you think of relaxing and you look at your list and you're like, no, I'm, I'm not going to do it, you know. But if you're going to just put uh, your to-do list in your head, you know, you think of competition, or think of chapter one, think of chapter seven of securities and you just get frustrated. Then you just, you know what, I'm just going to see it, you know. So that's yeah. my view, and that has been my experience. All right, Christy. Uh, yo, I think pretty much all the bases have been covered there. Um, yeah, studying through UNISA has, has been the same, COVID or not. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> I haven't had this this big change. Um, yeah. Other than my exams are also online. Um, 
so yeah, I, I also, during the year, from first year, COVID or not, I've had to sit down, plan out my time, and make sure I read weekly up on my cases. And it's a, it was mentioned previously about this accountability of, you know, having someone making sure that you, you submit and that type of thing. Yeah. We don't have that through Unison. And in a way, I'm quite thankful for it because I know if I'm given a task, I can sit down and I don't need someone to push me. Mm. But we all get to a stage where you need someone to say, you know, it's okay, keep going take a break and get back to it. Um, mm -hmm. I think, yeah, we just all get there. So we will all need motivation, whether you're a strong, independent person or not. So yeah, just planning, prioritizing, it's been pretty much the same. UNISA has done online exams. So they've given us, depending on the module, you either do an exam where you have a time limit, which is physically online, like a normal exam where you go right at a venue, or the alternative, which most of the fourth year modules are doing now, is you do a portfolio, which is pretty much like a, a thesis. You have about seven to 10 days to complete it. Um, and it's, it's a very big assignment. So you need to make sure you cover everything, whether it's from case law to journal articles, um, just the basic drill. So yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy. You need to make sure we finished our first semester. They've also provided everyone with data for those persons who don't have Wi-Fi access or anything like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm quite pleased with my institution. <laughs> wow, they are doing a really good job. Um, this one is for the ladies. Um, have you guys experienced any differentiation in terms of um, from your male counterparts, whether male students, lecturers, and so forth? You know, because women are... The, the League of Fraternity, in fact, has been dominated by males for the longest time. So there's the agenda of transformation and all of that, you know. Have you sort of, in a way, felt um, being treated differently or in an appropriate manner by males? For instance, whether you are in discussions, in class, and all of that. Oh, let me start with you, Karabo. <laughs> okay, I was waiting for that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Um, I would say yes, um, because it's, it's systematically there, you know, mm -hmm. it's systematically present. The culture itself is, is, is very male dominated on its own. Mm -hmm. So I think different treatment has definitely been there from both back work, from, you know, law school itself, from just mere engagements with, you know, male students themselves, mm -hmm. you know. So I think the differentiation is definitely there. But I think for me, the biggest, you know, differentiation and obviously ha identifying as black woman has been the biggest, you know, differentiating factor for me because I, I have, you know, two characteristics that often experience a lot of the oppression within the industry itself. Yeah. So I think it's, yeah, it's just been quite difficult, but I think there's obviously a transformative nature, you know, we are they're liberating a lot of, you know, women, but I think that the biggest problem for me is, you know, liberating women to fill up spaces for stats purposes or for, you know, for tokenism purposes or oh. for them to at least say we at least included women, but not substantially where women are actually making decisions. Women are actually making, you know, valuable contributions because we have valuable things to contribute. Oh. So I think, I think that's something that we really need to improve in. Um, and I think just nationally, globally, uh, we're seeing a lot of trend of, you know, formative inclusion of women and not substantive inclusion of women yeah all right thank you i think that that's a good one women should not merely be tolerated but actually given an opportunity to prosper or give um what you call have an uh an influence you know in the spaces that they occupy over to you christy all right, so just on the um, sexual discrimination part of it, um, I've mentioned previously that being a female that wants to do litigation and everyone knows you need to have this tough skin if you want to do litigation. I've had quite a few men actually tell you, you know, don't do litigation, go do conveyancing, have babies. That's the motto that goes with all of them. 
So, you know, just don't worry about it. It's, it's going to always be there. Um, and if they can't knock you on that, they'll try and knock you on something else. Like Robba mentioned earlier, she, she has a double barrel of discrimination just because she's female and also because of her race. Um, I also, I had a mood court mate who, she was brilliant. She was one of the best, best, best law students I've seen. She worked extremely hard and she was a black female. And afterwards she also, she had a gentleman approach her telling her she had white mannerisms because he couldn't knock her on the fact that she was a female. So he tried to get her on the fact that she's a black female. So yeah, it's, it's always going to be there, but that's why it's so important for all these gender-based violence movements or equality movements yeah. and equal pay. These problems will remain there, but the younger generation will always, I think they're starting to see the bigger picture of it. And the younger generation is starting to stand up for women and realizing this need for equality. All right, all right. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, guys, let's end it here for now. Thank you very much.